Since July 2021, a seemingly marginal diplomatic dispute between China and Lithuania has escalated to the point where it's now threatening relations between Beijing and the European Union and has even drawn in the United States. So what sparked it all and why is it so significant? Hello and welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is James Kerr Lindsay, and here I take an informed look at international relations, conflicts and the origins of countries. Sometimes what seem to be minor issues can become surprisingly big problems on the international stage. One of the most interesting current examples concerns a serious diplomatic dispute that's erupted between the People's Republic of China and the small Baltic state of Lithuania. Over the course of six months, what started as a rather minor diplomatic spat between the two countries has now escalated to the point that it's become a growing point of friction between the European Union and Beijing at a time when relations between the two are becoming increasingly fraught over a wide range of issues. But what makes the whole situation especially interesting is the way in which it raises some important broader questions about how the sides are developing their foreign policies. The dispute is centred on Taiwan. Regular viewers will know that I've covered this extensively in other videos and I've put the links above. But by way of summary, the issue emerged at the end of the Chinese Civil War in 1949. As communist forces established the People's Republic of China on the mainland, the nationalists fled to the island of Taiwan, where they continued to claim sovereignty over the entire country as the Republic of China. Although the Republic held the Chinese seat at the United Nations, in the years that followed, many countries switched their recognition. And in 1971, the Republic was expelled from the UN and replaced by the People's Republic. Since then, Beijing has continued its efforts to win recognition, a campaign that's intensified over the past six or seven years. As a result, today, just 13 UN members still recognize Taiwan. Despite this, many countries continue to have strong informal ties with Taiwan. Around 60 states, including the United States, Japan, Britain, France, Germany, Canada and Australia, have a presence in Taipei, the Taiwanese capital, most usually in the form of a trade or cultural representation. Likewise, Taiwan maintains a network of overseas missions, and it's this that lies at the heart of the current dispute between China and Lithuania. Lithuania lies on the eastern shore of the Baltic Sea in northeast Europe. At around 65,000 square kilometres or 25,000 square miles, it's the 121st largest of the 193 members of the United Nations. Its population currently stands at around 2.8 million, making it the 21st largest of the 27 members of the European Union. The story starts with the election of a new Lithuanian government in December 2020. Having signalled a strong commitment towards human rights, it soon began to distance itself from China. In May 2021, it withdrew from the 17 plus one, a Chinese initiative aimed at building ties with the countries of Central and Eastern Europe. At the same time, it also began to engage more openly with Taiwan. In July 2021, the Lithuanian Foreign Minister Gabrielis Landsbergis announced that a Taiwanese representative office would open in Vilnius, the Lithuanian capital. While not unusual, what made the announcement out of the ordinary was the name of the mission. The standard practice was to refer to them as Taipei representative offices rather than Taiwanese representative offices. In response, Beijing immediately denounced the decision and withdrew its ambassador from the country. However, with no sign that Lithuania would back down, the issue escalated. In November 2021, China removed Lithuania from its customs forms, effectively blocking imports from the country. It then imposed import restrictions on goods coming from other countries that contained Lithuanian parts or products. Then, in early December, Beijing announced that it was downgrading Lithuania's embassy and demanded that the mission staff return their identification cards. Fearing for their safety, Lithuania withdrew its personnel. Defending the country's actions, the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman argued that Lithuania had broken its commitment to the One China policy and had called into question China's sovereignty and territorial integrity by creating the impression of One China, One Taiwan. As he then bluntly put it, if certain people or forces in Lithuania insist on colluding with Taiwan independent separatist forces and going further down the dark path, they will eventually end up in the trash can of history. By now, the issue was gaining wider international attention. 
The United States, which has become increasingly concerned about China's intentions towards Taiwan and has been encouraging other countries to strengthen their ties to Taipei, openly supported Lithuania. However, in contrast, Lithuania's partners in the European Union appeared to be caught in a bind. Despite growing concern about Beijing's domestic and foreign policies, China is now the EU's biggest trade partner. As a result, the EU has been trying to balance its relations with the country. To this extent, the initial EU response to the crisis was therefore rather muted. Meeting for their six monthly council meeting in December 2021, it was telling that EU leaders made no mention of the issue in their conclusions. However, since then, the matter appears to have gained ground. For example, the European Parliament, which has become increasingly outspoken about China, has condemned Beijing for intimidating Lithuania. Meanwhile, the European Commission signalled that it was considering taking the matter of trade restrictions before the World Trade Organization. Indeed, it's just announced that it's launched proceedings at the WTO, although, as the EU Trade Commissioner has emphasised, steps to find an amicable solution will continue. Not least of all because a WTO case could take years to resolve. Meanwhile, although the EU's largest and most important members, France and Germany, have signalled solidarity with Lithuania, one gets the sense that they're not really fighting its corner as much as one would perhaps expect. For instance, meeting with the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, the new German Foreign Minister, Annalena Baerbock, said, we, as Europeans, stand in solidarity at Lithuania's side. This stood in marked contrast to Blinken's rather lengthier comments on the issue, in which he directly accused China of bullying Lithuania and said that the United States would push its partners to stand up to Beijing's intimidation and counter its economic blackmail. This was, of course, telling. Although the new German government has signalled that it wants to take a tougher line on China, it didn't pass unnoticed that Germany's powerful car manufacturers, who are now feeling the pressure over restrictions on Lithuanian components, have weighed in to make it clear that they want to see the matter settled. What makes this whole situation so interesting is that it highlights much deeper dilemmas faced by all sides. For China, Taiwan is obviously a sensitive national issue. However, its behaviour appears counterproductive. Set against its increasing assertiveness on the world stage, its crackdown in Hong Kong, serious concerns about its treatment of the Uyghurs and its increasingly threatening signals towards Taiwan, its recent behaviour towards Lithuania is seen by many as further proof of Beijing's rising aggressiveness. Far from cowing Vilnius into submission, it's convinced many that China is a bully and has seen them rally around Lithuania and Taiwan. Similarly, China's economic sanctions only serve to emphasise the need to move away from a reliance on Chinese goods and markets. To this end, there's a growing argument that China's heavy-handedness is therefore making its overall position weaker. This seems to be seen with the EU. Having long tried to balance its approach towards China, the dispute seems to have forced many member states and many within the institutions to finally take sides. It's also given an impetus to EU efforts to introduce new measures to counter pressure put on member states, which in turn will make such pressure much more difficult in future. But it also raises serious questions for the Union. Foreign policy remains in the hands of member states, and they expect solidarity from their EU partners when faced with the consequences of their decisions. But what happens when those decisions have serious effects on other members? In this case, a decision taken by Vilnius, with no apparent consultation with its partners, is affecting other member states and the EU's entire relationship with China. And this puts Lithuania in a bind. While the economic effects of the dispute have been rather limited, trade with China accounts for less than 1% of the country's overall trade, and Taiwan has already said that it will step in to make up for many of the losses. Divisions in Lithuania are growing. Although the foreign minister insists that the government won't back down, calling the matter a test that the West cannot afford to fail, the country's president has questioned the government's stance. And polls seem to show that it's unpopular amongst the public. While many may see the original intention as laudable, the wider consequences, not just for Lithuania, but also for Lithuania's European partners, are becoming apparent. Perhaps put bluntly, if you're going to set such a serious geopolitical test for your partners, it seems only good manners to run it past them first.
Meanwhile, despite its public support for Vilnius, it also seems that Washington is perhaps having second thoughts, and one wonders if in private, Taiwan is too. Although the United States has become increasingly supportive of Taiwan and is keen to encourage others to engage more with Taipei, it may well have decided that the Lithuanian spat is counterproductive. Beijing currently takes issue with the name of representative offices. Pushed too far, it may start to take issue with the offices themselves. Reports have therefore emerged that Washington is trying to find a face-saving way out. But of course, the US won't want to give the impression that China's tough approach has worked. As things stand, it isn't clear how the situation will evolve. While publicly Vilnius appears to be sticking to its position, reports suggest that ideas to break the impasse are emerging. This includes renaming the office, but in a way that doesn't seem to be giving in to China completely. Meanwhile, although China says it's ready to de-escalate the row, things may not be so simple. Indications from Beijing suggest that Vilnius will have to do more than merely rename the mission. It will have to re-evaluate its China policy and stop following the US agenda. One suspects that Beijing will almost certainly want to use this incident to set an example for others. Meanwhile, it may not be long until we see what lessons have been learned from this dispute. Already another potential crisis is brewing. The Slovenian Prime Minister Janis Janša, a right-wing populist, has now condemned China's economic coercion of Lithuania and announced that his country will also strengthen relations with Taiwan, including setting up reciprocal offices. Then, in an interview on Indian television, he made it clear that he supported the right of the people of Taiwan to choose their own future, a comment quickly condemned by China as a dangerous statement in support of Taiwan independence. All this suggests that a seemingly minor issue that became a serious problem could well be about to escalate yet further. I hope you found that useful. If so, here are some other videos that you might like. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.